It's Friday, so I wanted to give you guys all the great voices, all the great special on-air treats I could. And with that in mind, we had to go with all six foot ten of him. Jesse Kelly joins us now, the host of I'm Right with Jesse Kelly on Pluto TV's The First. Also, the syndicated radio host, Mr. Jesse Kelly. And one day, perhaps even, who knows, President of the United States or something, Jesse Kelly. He's got, all, he's got big <laughs> aspirations for himself. Although today, I will tell you, he is, uh, he is out there, and he is going the full Miami Vice right now because I can see him as we're doing this interview. I love it. And he's like Don Johnson in the 80s, except his, his shirt is not pink, but he's wearing a T-shirt with a blazer. I'm sorry, is, it, is this like two for one night at, out in Boca or something? What's going on here with the, the T-shirt and the blazer, Jesse? You know, you know what this is called, Buck? This is called Friday mode, man. This is called Friday mode, just laid back and chilling. I mean, look, I, I'm always the best. But on Friday, I like to give people the best version of relaxed, Jesse, because I'm here to get you and all your amazing viewers into weekend mode, and that's what I'm here for, man. I just, I feel like uh, it, it also led me astray in the, early, in the early days on Miami Vice. I figured, wow, you can be a cop, and drive around in the equivalent of like a $250,000 Ferrari as long as you live on a houseboat and have a pet alligator. <laughs> I, you, I, I, you know what else Miami Vice did? And, and all Miami TV shows and movies do this exact same thing. Miami Beach is a beautiful place, and it has some of the most beautiful women you've ever seen in your life. So all that's true. But almost every time they show Miami shows, or they show Miami on a show or a movies, they always make it look as if it's some tropical paradise, some glistening paradise, when so many parts of, Ni of Miami are absolutely run down holes. It has beautiful parts to it, but I have felt more unsafe in Miami than I ever did in Baghdad. Right. Well, I was going to say, my, Miami Vice was like a tourism ad for a city that actually in the, <laughs> in the 80s, there were broad daylight, full-on machine gun shootouts between cartel assassins. It was one of the most violent places in the world for, a, for civilian crime stuff. It was out of control, but it was a great oh, it's show. Worse. It's worse than that. It was a great show. It's worse than that. People don't realize like the entire Miami skyline was built on cocaine money. I'm not making that oh, yeah. up. That's not just like something, uh, a, a crazy thing to say. You can watch the documentary. Great documentary. Cocaine Cowboys. Cocaine Cowboys. That's right. Yep. And they talk about it, how all of a sudden there was a bank on every corner because they're all laundering money. And virtually everything you see in Miami was built from cocaine. It's just, and when you go there, you realize why. So, Jesse, I, I was going to ask you about some of the news of the day, but I, I also wanted to get your take on the Waco series. Even if you haven't seen it, I just want to get your take on Waco in general. But the Waco series on Netflix uh, is fan I finished it last night. It's phenomenal. Uh, Taylor Kitsch should have gotten some kind of, I don't know if he got any awards, but not that anyone cares about those awards these days. But he gave a remarkable performance as David Koresh. And I was just noting that, you know, it's a tough week for the FBI, given the stuff with Flynn. And now also <laughs> a lot more people have seen this Waco situation. First off, have you seen the show? And second, just in general, even if you haven't seen it, what's, what, what, what should people remember about what happened in Waco, Texas at that standoff with feds? Well, one, I'm two episodes in, but two, I have seen the story. I obviously know the story very well. I know the Ruby Ridge story, too, which obviously they cover in Waco, which is as bad or worse than Waco actually was. I mean, not for total loss of life, but it was really, really ugly. And look, all people should take away from it is you can't necessarily trust the criminal justice system, man. You can't necessarily trust the government. I'm not saying you need to rebel against it, but there is this way of thinking in America that you have to either, you know, respect police, or you have to be this anti-cop scumbag, uh, you can actually just be a normal, well-reasoned, thinking human being who realizes that cops, law enforcement in general, most of them are putting their butts on the line for you every single day, while at the same time, they are the enforcement arm for every bad government policy there is. We see it right now when they're locking up salon owners. It's, it's, it's the history of the world says, that cops and the military will be used by an overreaching government to enforce bad policies. And Americans, especially people on the right, you've heard our people do this, Buck, of, oh, the military would, would never enforce these anti-constitutional gun laws. Oh, cops would never go along with that. I hope you're all paying attention now. You've all seen a two-month example of 
They will go along with anything they're told to do because it's their mortgage on the line. It's their car payment on the line. The government tells them to go arrest some poor sap for paddle boarding in the ocean. It's mobilize the police boats, baby. They're going to go put them in cuffs. Jesse, actually, that's a, that's a perfect transition as well into this story that's now getting a lot of attention because the president has commented on actually uh, uh, producer Mark. Do you have the uh, do you have the president's comments on this one? If you do, just play it and I'll tell Jesse when we come back from. Yeah, play clip seven. So I saw the tape and it's very, very disturbing. The tape. I got to see it. It's very disturbing. I looked at a picture of that young man. He was in a tuxedo. And uh, in fact, you put it up. Uh, and I, I will say that that looks like a really good young guy, and it it looks very it's a very disturbing situation to me. And I just uh, you know my heart goes out to the parents and the family and the friends, uh, but uh, yet we have to take it. You know, law enforcement's going to look at it, and uh, they have a good governor in the state, and he's going to very good governor actually, and he's going to be looking at it very strongly, and uh, he's going to do what's right. But it's a it's a heartbreaking thing. That was very rough, rough stuff. So, Jesse, President Trump saying that the uh, the video that he's seen of of Ahmed uh, Ahmed Arbery um, is heartbreaking stuff. It looks really bad. You know, they've got a good governor, though. They're going to look into this law enforcement now has taken action. They're arresting people. They seem to be a, a tremendous amount of back and forth on social media. I came a little late to this story. I, I feel like I've just been looking at it the last 24 hours but what well, we we had a, a, a uh, mr arbery was jogging two guys who were n- near near their pickup truck they had shotguns and they tried to get him to stop and they said i believe that they were trying to affect the citizens arrest because of burglaries that had happened in the neighborhood arbery had some kind of uh you know some kind of confrontation with them that, that these guys forced and then he got shot and he was killed now there's video of it First off, am I, am I, is the narrative, and I, I might be a little off, is the narrative essentially right on the facts there? And what's your take on what happened here? And what, what's the, it doesn't seem like there should be much argument. It looks like these guys killed this guy and they're not cops. And what the heck were they doing? Well, there's not much argument out there. People are acting as if, oh, this is a, this is a, why are, why are people standing up against this? Virtually every single person is standing against this. It's not much of an argument. This is not one of those cases where you see like five seconds of a police video that looks really bad and everyone jumps to conclusions and then you get the rest of the story and all of a sudden you look like an idiot. No, we saw the whole thing on video. We have all the background on it. It looks like a former police officer, that's the dad and his son, the dad apparently had some sort of investigative history with this Ahmad Arbery, so he knew him in some way, but they tried to stop him with weapons when the guy was apparently out jogging. There was not even an accusation that he was doing anything wrong. We even have a 911 transcript of them calling 911 and the operators asking, why are you calling 911? And they essentially say, well, I mean, I don't really know. They don't have an answer. Look, it looks bad. It is bad. The bad part is this happened in February, man. We all saw the video yesterday and those guys were just arrested last night. After all this social media rage we saw, and it shouldn't take that, and people are losing faith in law enforcement. So all that's bad, but allow me to also say this. One, this is not an opportunity for people like LeBron James to become some civil rights leader, which he badly wants to be, talking about how black men are out there being hunted. We don't know that. We don't know a motivation. We can talk about the fact that an innocent man was apparently gunned down and feel for his family without instantly making everything as if you're Martin Luther King. You're not. Stop with that. That's one. Two, the people on the right, I see it. This drives me crazy. I've seen it all over the media of, this is a modern day lynching. We can't have this lynching of all these people on the right with this stupid language. People, just because the left has called you racist for the last 30 years doesn't mean you are. And it doesn't mean you have to overcompensate every time a black dude gets killed to try to really prove how not racist you are. I have black friends. I said lynching. Doesn't that make me one of the in-crap people? You can just judge each case as it is. The dude wasn't a black man. He was a dude who got murdered. That's really bad. It's bad enough. Feel for his family. Cry for justice, which we're apparently going to get, and it's fine. You're not Martin Luther King. You don't have to check out all the woke boxes just because the left has been lying about what you believe. 
Cosine. I mean, I think I think that pretty much covers it on that case. I mean, it looks like it looks like a uh, you know them, these guys are get charged with manslaughter or murder, and if, unless there's something we don't really know, which doesn't seem like there is, they should spend a whole lot of time in prison. Uh, that that's the way it is, you know. Well, um, I will tell you. I, I I will tell you. Sorry to interrupt you real quick, but I I always so because I'm so hesitant on these things because of all the outrage. I'm hesitant to ever or ever even comment on it. I looked into this quite a bit over the last 24 hours. It it it, it is apparently as bad as it looked initially this is it, it looks pretty open and shut man it's well i shut. just think about it it's also embarrassing it from from, from and you know you always hear this stuff from from the left-wing media of oh and the, even now i'm like there's was there any controversy i didn't hear any controversy and you're like no there's no i mean when i say there's no controversy there's no two sides that are one side saying yeah, yeah this looks like it's total i haven't seen anyone say this looks this looks like it was a clean shoot or a legal shoot or a you know Law enforcement uses different terms for it. Self-defense. I haven't seen anybody making that case based on the video. And it reminds me of when that guy, uh, that, that African-American man was shot running away from the cop. I think it was in South Carolina. And there was all this lib outrage about, see, conservatives are even defending this. Every single conservative in media I know was like, that was murder. Send that dude who shot him to prison for life. Like, there was no, there wasn't uh, a back and forth over that. Like, people don't actually defend people murdering other people on the right uh, and the left seems to like to pretend this game or pr- pretend that that's what happens. But I, I think I think we've pretty much covered where this one is. Uh, we're speaking to Jesse Kelly, everybody. He is the host of the Jesse Kelly show on radio. And also I'm right with Jesse Kelly on Pluto TV's the first, which is why I can see him, which is why I'm giving him a hard time about his Miami Vice outfit today. Uh, but I also wanted to transition, Jesse, because you're one of the well, you're one of the few. I mean, I can kind of count most of the of the skeptics. Uh, out there and when i say skeptics i just mean people that ask questions right people that are saying hold on a second about this you've been very vocal about the damage to the economy and how the lockdowns were a bad idea i was even more vocal about it for me initially and then i was just like okay people are crazy i can't even i can't take this and now i'm like all right this has gotten so bad i'm gonna be vocal about it again um and there are you know baronson uh i I, I don't know matt walsh is very very much uh in favor of reopen i mean there's there's like a few dozen of us that have been yelling about this for a long time online. What's it going to take, man? When, when, cause I, I guess now has it just become so political that it doesn't matter how much suffering there is and how many people are losing their businesses and their life savings in the process. As long as this crushes Trump, it's worth it to people. Is that where we are? Uh, to be honest, Buck, it's even worse than that. It's all a game of percentages, man. It's all a game of percentages. Poll after poll after poll continually shows that 60, 70% of the people are okay with this. And the reason for that is, yeah, we've got 40, 50 million Americans probably unemployed. That's probably the real number. It's not 33 million. It's a lot more than that. Everyone knows that. But virtually everyone else is either still getting a paycheck or because of that idiot bill they passed, that $2 trillion bill everyone was cheering They're paying people the equivalent of $52,000 a year to be unemployed. I personally know business owners, more than one, who have called their employees because we're opening back up in Texas and said, hey, it's about time to get back to work. And their employees have said, no, I'm making more money now. So not only have we crushed jobs, but we're paying people to stay home. Therefore, most of the public, not all, I'd say 30% of the public wants to open back up. The rest of the people are either still getting a check or they're making more money on unemployment. So the politicians look at these numbers and think, huh, keep them locked down. And we are kicking this can down the road. And we, the pain is now, just because it's delayed, oh, it, it's, it's really, really bad, Buck. I, don't, I know it's a Friday. I don't want to bring anybody down. But as bad as you think it is, if I were to actually go into all the details of what's happening in this economy, it's 10 times worse than that. We are, what, we are in for serious What's it going to take? Serious the, the, the problem here, and, you know, the, the politicians, you know, Cuomo and these people that have been heralded in the media. Has been, it, Cuomo has been a disaster in New York. I mean, his, his contribution so far has been long, over, overblown press conferences that didn't give us data that we couldn't have gotten in two slides in two minutes. And then also sending people with COVID-19 back into nursing homes. That, that's been his contribution to the fight against COVID-19 in New York. It's been it's been a, and complaining about ventilators. And then turns out we don't need them. Uh, but the fact that people and this is my concern, the people in a majority still want the lockdown to continue. You broke down why some people are still getting a paycheck. Some people don't understand the economic implications. What does it take for that number nationally to move so that people realize we've got to reopen person. 
has to become personal for enough people and it hasn't yet that's just the truth of the matter buck for two months a lot most people are either collecting unemployment they're watching netflix they're day drinking which god god love them for that but as soon as people start showing up at the supermarket and there's no meat then they'll realize as soon as the unemployment checks stop coming then they'll realize as soon as we open back up and you have exactly half of the restaurants you used to have then they'll realize i mean people are not gonna it, uh, it's official now we live in a country Sadly, unless until it becomes personal, people don't care. I thought the one the one thing I've ever been wrong about ever in my life, Buck, was at the very beginning of this. I told everybody we were going to have 30 plus million unemployed people. Everyone told me I was an idiot and I was wrong. And of course, I turned out to be right like always. But what I said was once we hit that number, America will freak out and wake up and they'll turn on a dime and say, open us back up. That's what I was wrong about. They still don't give a crap. Until 51% until of this population is flat, broken, busted, we won't open back up again. I think you're right, which is really disconcerting. But uh, he is right, because that's the name of his show. I'm right with Jesse Kelly. That's the place you should go on Pluto TV to check him out. Also, listen to the Jesse Kelly Show. And down in KPRC Houston, it's a fantastic radio lineup there. They have Jesse Kelly and Buck Sexton, so that makes it the best radio station in Houston. No question. Check him out. Jesse, thanks for your time, man. Be good, man. I mean, it's been stunning, actually, how the, the, some of his surrogates with the blue checks, you know, that are his surrogates have been saying really horrible things about me and to me on social media. Um, he has it himself, but there is a measure of hypocrisy with the campaign saying it's safe. It's not been safe. You know, all my social media has been hacked. All my personal information has been dragged through. Every person that maybe has a, you know, a gripe against me, an ex-boyfriend or an ex-landlord, whatever it is, has been able to have a platform rather than me. Um, talking about things that have nothing to do with 1993, like even the whole thing with being called a Russian agent, that in particular, um, that incites people. People actually, I got a death threat from that because they thought I was being a traitor to America. And I mean, these are serious things like and his campaign is taking this position that they want all women to be able to speak safely. I have not experienced that. We will not forget the allegations against Joe Biden here on the show, nor will we allow it to go uh, without notice that there are people who are working for the election of Joe Biden, who are supporting him, who are trying desperately to silence Tara Reid and her thus far entirely credible, not proven, but credible allegation of sexual assault that does have contemporaneous corroboration, we're not going to let this go. The Democrats, the libs, they pretend to have certain principles, certain goals in mind for women, and we know that they're frauds, and we will hold them accountable for that. So I know we didn't talk about this much today in the show, but I will deep dive with you on this on Monday. Don't think that I'm letting this one slide. Joe Biden and the Democrats are going to answer for what they need to here. It's going to happen. It's time for Roll Call. Roll Call, everybody. You know what that means. We get to hear from all of you. Please make sure you check in on BuckSexon.com and uh, you also are subscribed to our podcast. One really amazing thing is that uh, I've been told by our digital team that our podcast, people tend to listen to it the whole thing which is really rare in the world of podcasts because we do a pretty we do a pretty long show and put the whole thing out. You know, if I just wanted to, producer Mark and I just wanted to juice up the numbers a bit, we could put out like a 30 or 40 minute podcast. Oh, people download that. And it seems like that's an easier listen. But we put out the whole show every day. And you wonderful folks who do me the constant honor of giving me some of your time and producer Mark giving us some of your time. Uh, you, you are listening to the whole show. And that really means a lot to us. So please continue to spread the word about the Buck Sexton Show podcast, and uh, we'll continue doing what we do here. Uh, remember, you can listen to it on Spotify. is really easy for those of you who are on Spotify, the iHeart app. You can also go to the uh, Apple Podcasts uh, or just the Apple Podcast app. Is a, you type in Buck Sexton. It should pop up very, very uh, straightforward. So please do listen, and, and as importantly, tell people about the show. It really helps us out. All right, roll call. David, oh, and YouTube. I can't forget youtube.com slash Buck Sexton. If you want to see what we're doing on the on the Pluto TV channel, and we'll also post some exclusive content there. We're going to be doing more and more of that. 
you know, the problem I have now is I'm spending so many hours every day doing radio that I really, I really actually am running out of time to do anything else on any given day. So, uh, cause I'm doing five hours of radio, which is a lot for anybody. You know, five hours of solo radio. I'm, I've never heard of anyone else doing that. I'm sure there are some people who have done it, but I don't know. That's not, not common. Uh, David writes in, Hey Buck, you're a few years younger than I am, but I remember when I was a kid, if somebody got chicken pox, our parents would have chicken pox parties so we could all get out of the way. Obviously a different, different virus, but same premise. Um, David, I've heard of this. And yeah, I think people have done this with, with, uh, I mean, I think measles is more dangerous than chicken pox. I, I don't really know though. So don't take my, my word on that one. And yeah, I've heard of this. Um, you know, chicken pox can actually come back later on in life as shingles too. And uh, interestingly enough, I, as a teenager, had, I had, I had chicken pox as a little kid, but I actually had shingles as a teenager, which is very rare. And they had no idea why. But yeah, I had full-blown shingles when I was about 18. And to give you a sense of how brilliant doctors are, the first dermatologist, a specialist that I went to, thought that it was spider bites. It was not spider bites. I had to go back and that because it, it spread and grew and was very painful. It was on the on the trunk of my body. And, and they still I was like, why am I getting I'm a healthy kid. I was 18. I was in great shape. I felt fine. Why am I getting shingles? You know, usually it happens to people with a weakened immune system when they're older. And it's a recurrence of the uh, chicken pox, uh, chicken pox virus that stays in your system. It lies dormant in your system and comes back later on. It can be very bad for particularly older people if you get uh, it tends to happen on the trunk or on the face. And if it gets near your eyes, you can actually go blind from it, I think. So you got to be very careful with uh, shingles. It's very painful, too. Anyway, um, Ed writes, producer Mark and Buck, glad you're making it through the great lockdown of 2020. Thank you both for what you give us out here in lockdown America. Well, thank you, Ed. My talk radio roots go way back to before the late 1980s when Rush was doing caller abortions. Hmm. During the Waco incident, talk host G. Gordon Liddy always referred to the HRT as the, wow, as the hostage roasting team. It sticks with me to this day, and I think of it every time you mention Waco, driving, listening with Shields High. Well, thank you, Ed. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, everybody listening to this one, if you're looking for a show on Netflix, that Waco show is, and it was originally, was it all, what was it on, um, what channel was it? Paramount Network. On? What, what was it called? Paramount Network. It was Paramount Network. Really? So I think it was. It's what like FX used is is what FX is now. Oh well, yeah. Well, yeah. that's right. I think it was an FX series, and now it's you know, owned by Paramount. Um, but it was a yeah. Uh, it's a very good series. A very good show. I highly, highly recommend uh, you check it out. And Taylor Kitsch, who some of you would know from, he played Gambit in one of the. Uh, x-men movies briefly so if you saw what was uh, it was the wolverine movie i think do you know what i'm talking about i know what you're talking about but i don't remember him in it yeah i forget what yeah he was in it he was like my name is remy lebeau i have a weird french accent and i'm gambit you know uh and he's only in the movie for a couple of seconds it is not it's not a good appearance really because the gambit character they don't i didn't think they did a good job with at all but uh he's also from friday night lights which is a show that i liked a lot even though it had its problems um, but he, the Waco, you gotta, you gotta watch it because here, here's the one the, the, this factoid, I knew this beforehand, but this comes up at the end. FBI said you had 75 people die, uh, either burned to death or smoke inhalation in, in the Waco compound. And FBI made no provision to put out the fire after they used the, uh, CS gas. So the whole, the, when the building catches on fire, they didn't think, and they'd been parked outside for like two months. Okay. No one thought to have fire trucks handy. That's not exactly great planning. It's not like they were short on time to figure this out either. And then initially the FBI claimed that they did not use any incendiary devices of any kind while they were using the CS gas to drive them out of the compound, you know, the tear gas, basically drive them out of the compound. And then it came out, oh no, they use flashbang grenades, grenades, which can be an incendiary device. So they lied. They lied about it, which, you know, FBI cannot lie you know maybe they should like put that on big uh, plaques and put it all over the, the j edgar hoover building in dc quite a guy to name the fbi building for when you think about some of his stuff anyway uh, i really recommend you see the waco show 
surely. And by the way, you know, other thing is, yeah, the Branch Davidians. I mean, David Koresh was a nut job and a pedo and you know, a lot of terrible stuff going on there, too. But we expect the FBI to act appropriately, even when dealing with Koresh, Koresh-like nut jobs. Uh, surely, have you seen patients, uh, videos of patients being wheeled out of the hospital after surviving complicated treatment for COVID, staff lining the halls clapping? I guess there are over 50 staff standing right next to each other, but wearing masks inside a hospital. Yet fill in the blank. Can't be in a salon. Can't be in a church, etc., etc. Um, well, surely, I mean, I, surely, I think I get what you're trying to say here. But keep in mind that in a hospital, they're being ex- I mean, they're wearing protective equipment and they're, they're all being exposed to the virus. So they're they're inherently being exposed to the virus. So it's a little different than, say, in a grocery store or something like that. But. We'll keep it. We got to keep an eye on make sure that the standard is applied universally through all these different jurisdictions that are saying you have to wear wear masks. But, you know, hospitals, they they they're on they're dealing with this stuff. And so they they know they know what they're uh, what they're up against at this point. Dave, how is it that China opened up a while back, but we are still closed with talk of kids not going back to school in the fall? Dave, that is a very good question for which nobody really has a great answer. Did China really control this thing, or is China pretending to have it under control? We know China not just uh, not only lied about it in the early stages, but also the Chinese uh, government was stockpiling equipment to deal with it when they were telling everybody else that you know there was no big deal here, it was going to be fine. And we know they lied about the casualties they suffered from this, but have they, using extreme measures... Have they really managed to contain, which I guess is the best way to describe it, contain the virus? There are some other countries that seem to have achieved a state of containment right now. Australia, Japan, South Korea. They seem to have this contained, but they're also not fully returned. So they have it contained, but they haven't really fully returned to normal life either. So I think that's notable. Um, But the answer is I don't I don't know exactly uh, what, and I don't think anybody really knows exactly how true China's containment is and and what they've done well that we could emulate over here. Uh, Eric is a very smart character, this Eric. He writes in the subject line, I love producer Mark. Gee, I wonder if when producer Mark is looking for roll call segments, that is going to catch his attention. Eric, you are a smooth operator. Yeah, that was very smart, I admit. And I rarely yeah. include the subject line in the email, but I mean, when I sent right. it to you, but, but I Eric, had to Eric, there, Eric, yeah. <laughs> Eric worked the system on this one. We got to give him credit for it. Quick question, Buck. Do you think the Salon case in Dallas will end up in the Supreme Court to determine the constitutionality of it? I hope it gets deemed unconstitutional to set a precedent for the next time the libs try to pull this again. What are your thoughts? Eric, I don't it, it's not going to go that far. I think the state is likely to drop all charges against her. Um, and, you know, we've seen this now with the Supreme Court decision that I actually think was the wrong one for guns and the transportation of legally owned firearms here in New York, where all they had to do was once they got caught with what was clearly an unconstitutional law, they changed the law a little bit. And then when it makes its way to the Supreme Court, the, the Supreme Court says it's a moot point. It doesn't matter anymore. So if the lockdown, you know, I, I would think that some of the stuff we're seeing in lockdowns, if people sue when they're suing for relief, unless they can prove specific damages to themselves or their business, which I'm sure a lot of people could. But, you know, this is going to get very complicated. But they're going to also say, well, look, this is no longer the law, so we don't really have to worry about this, do we? Um, that seems to me to be at least somewhat the precedent that was set in that Supreme Court case. All right, roll call continuing here. Buck, love the show. Listen to the podcast every day. This is from Nate. Thank you so much, Nate. Here in Virginia, Comrade Northam just extended our non-essential business shutdown for the whole state, despite 50% of Virginia's cases being limited to the counties and cities around D.C. and Richmond. I live in a small city in the western part of the state. We only have 20 confirmed cases and one hospitalization. I spoke to a friend whose wife is a nurse with the UVA health system, And according to her, only three of the hospital's 20 ventilators have been used. My parents are in the high risk category, but even they say this has gone on way too long. We're all just tired of being cooped up in our houses. 
Yeah, I, I hear this from more and more people, even who are in the high risk category in New York, too. They're saying you, you guys, we might be a little slower, but you who are at lower risk, if you want to go out there, you should be able to. You should be able to open your businesses, go to work and start to engage in day to day life and commerce and things like going to the gym. If the gym in my in my building where I live opened and I live in a building with hundreds and hundreds of residents, so the gym can be very busy. Um, if the gym in my building opened up, uh, I would go tomorrow. It's just the truth. I mean, I know there's some risk, whatever. And, you know, I try not to touch my eyes a lot after touching the shared equipment and stuff. But, you know, what, what else are you going to do? Because, uh, man, I'm, I'm getting a little slower and a little rounder every day right now. I've done I've been doing some push ups here and there when I can. But, you know, it's tough to motivate to do push ups when, like, you're just wearing sweats all day. And the most exciting part of your day is picking out what you're going to watch on TV and, you know, what you're going to put on the popcorn you're making slash the ice cream you're eating slash the cookies that you might be baking. You know what I mean? What happened yeah. to that 100 push-up challenge? I got about seven days into it, and then okay. I got a headache, and I uh, kind of fell off. Okay. I did it for a week, though. Well, it's more than so I did, I guess. Yeah, I mean, so I, I probably should get back to it, because it's supposed to be 30 days, not seven bucks. Yeah. Good, good point. Good reminder. That, Malta podcast, you know, I got a to-do list. I, got uh, a to-do I list. would put That's the Malta podcast above the push-ups. <laughs> That's just me. All right, all right. Fair enough. Oh, Nate writes more. I didn't even see this. I get a laugh. Perfect timing. Whenever you and producer Mark discuss pet options, I've had guinea pigs for about eight years. They're very friendly and calming. Great attributes for when you're stuck at home during a pandemic. Plus, easy to maintain. If you really want to be ambitious, you can get their South American cousin, the capybara, which is truly a, an R-O-U-S, a rodent of unusual size. Keep up the great work. Shields high. Um, Nate, can you legally get a capybara in America? I know they're like rats that are the size of dogs, literally the size of dogs. They're rodents Excuse that are me, huge. What? Yeah, they're the do, do no. Google search. No, the no, I don't. I don't want to. No, they're kind of cute though. No, because they don't have a scary looking rat face. Just or get rat a dog. Pa- yeah, or or just get. A dog. <laughs> you, you, so basically, you want me to get a subway rat? G- no, 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 a thirty pound subway rat. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if you saw one of those on the subway, would you? Especially, yeah, yeah, I feel like you don't know what they mutate these days down yeah, there. I, exactly. I've definitely seen some rats that I feel like were three or four pounds. Three or which, four. Which, I've seen ones that are at least c- close to ten. Come on, yes, come on. You've a never seen one on the rat subway. Would be absolutely. I might be exaggerating huge. a little bit, but like, there's some huge rats down on the subway system. Yeah, man, that's a perfect environment for them. There are people just throwing trash and food down there all the time. They can, you know, they have no real, they have no real predators. People throw so, trash on the tracks as if there's not like a garbage can ten feet away from them. I, I you know, I, I, I never understand why people can't take better, better care of their trash in the subway. But and then they complain when the subway shuts down because the trash is on fire or something. Yeah, I know. Huh. It's crazy. Jake keeps it going here. Uh, Buck, you really should move to Nashville. You would have access to an iHeartRadio facility, no state income tax, and minimum state gun laws. Not to mention freedom. You could live in the middle of the city if you wanted to stay urban, or you could live in a suburban rural area if you wanted to breathe clean air. Not paying state income tax, you could probably fly back to see your family in NYC once a month and still come out ahead. Jake, uh, that is a very feasible and enticing plan. So don't think that that has not crossed my mind, especially as the New York shutdown continues to drag on and on. I love Nashville. Great town. I actually just spoke to a friend yesterday out in Denver about trying to go out and see our friends at 93.7 fm in denver so once the world opens up and i can start to travel again i mean that i've been promising klbj austin and i've been promising now recently 93.7 fm denver that i'll make stops there so those are two very high on the list for me but we got we got a lot of places a lot of places we want to visit you know a lot of things that we want to want to check out and see i mean we got wrno in new orleans i love new orleans Producer Mark, we go on a little a little field trip down there. Check that out. Yeah, as long as you're taking producer Mark with you, I'm okay with all of this. Yeah, I've never even been to Nebraska, KFAB in Omaha, Nebraska. Love to check out the KFA uh, KFAB folks. They've been loyal Team Buck listeners for years. We got so many. We got so many places. WHP in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. WA, WHP has been with us since the beginning of this show. They were early Buck Leavers. And so that's old school team buck there as well. Um, so, you know, we got W.A.E.B., Allentown, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, another great station that I mean, these are all places I want to go visit. 
been promising to do it for a while, but you know, it's tough when the planes are all shut down. So I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. Uh, JJ, those who believe in the sacredness of a government's right to supreme power is a belief that the government is a benevolent parent who will make you live in a warm, predict, uh, protected bubble with no cares or worries. They are perpetual children deluding themselves that they're giving up their choices for the greater good, afraid of the consequences of people allowed to make their own choices. I don't think I have much to add to that. Thanks, JJ. Team, have a fantastic weekend. Shields high.